to Mark Flops Shep once again and welcome to my tutorial on the Neolemix new format. These tutorial format videos seem to be pretty popular amongst the community and it's particularly been helpful among the newer members I've noticed so I've decided to uh, try and uh, unravel the sticky web recently that's been known as the Neolemix new format. So, first of all, you should download the, for the new format and you should try and put everything in the same folder. Now, I know it's got two Neolemix folders here, but I uh, put the old format and the new format in the same folder, but then I put them both in subfolders. But hopefully that's going to change soon because I'm going to move over completely to the new format and just have the old format archived somewhere. <laughs> so... Once you have everything installed, it should look like this. You're probably going to have the settings file, the logging file, or the error log file. They'll be created once you open them. And you probably won't have the hotkeys one either. I'm not exactly sure what you should be seeing here, but you have something that looks like this. It shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be anything missing basically from here. Everything you install should be in here somewhere. So. One thing I've been, that's been pointed out to me on countless occasions is you don't have a music folder when you install it. I'm not sure if that's going to get fixed in later versions, but uh, if you don't have a music folder, all you need to do is uh, just create an empty folder and call it music. And it's where all your music goes, basically. And the uh, editor will look in there. The uh, every Everything on, in here will look in there for music. So... Just make sure you got a music folder and everything will be all right. So I'm going to I'm going to try and explain to the best of my knowledge what everything in the everything in here does. So first we've got the data folder, and it's got the music folder here. You can modify the track rotation here, and I think if you add more lines, like if you add more track, you can actually edit the amount of the rotation as well. So all you need to do is you need to put the name of the music files here after this, after the word track. So this is the glorious thing about the text-based format is you can have, you can basically just modify the text files in, well, I'd say it's, I'd say it's a very loose text format, but at the same time, I think the key thing here is when it's capitals, that's telling you what the function is. But when it comes back to lower case, which NEPS has been trying to enforce, I've noticed. Um, and I can say I can actually see now, right now, recording this, why he's enforced it. To be honest, because it can, it does actually make the text file format a lot easier. When it's in lower case, that's actually the the value of the function. So this track here is function, and the lower case is the uh, the value of it. And I know, I know what you're saying. How can it be a value if it's a word? But words can be values as well. So you're welcome to save these, modify them in any way. But I just say, if you do modify these anyway, just remember what you did. Because if you, in the case that you actually cause a bug in Neolemix, you know, you might need to report it or something. And um, post view, this is where you can well, look, notice all the capital letters again. Notice how it's capitals for what the uh, what the field is. And then, so this is basically telling you what all the save requirements are. So if you get naught on a level, you know, as in absolutely no lemming save, that's the condition equals naught. Then the line is rock bottom, I hope for your sake. And it's a line again because that's the second line of it. And the dollar signs, I'm not exactly sure what the dollar signs do, but I think they're, uh, I can't really explain what the dollar signs do, but you should not be messing with these capital letter things anyway. So goal rule number one is when you're looking at these text files, don't mess with the capital letter things. Only pay attention to what's after them. So that's what music and post view are about anyway. You can modify the track 
You can modify the track rotation, what plays, how many tracks are in the rotation and everything. Post view. Um, again, I don't exactly remember to tell you what that was. This is in case, and it should be noted that this actually modifies it for every level pack that you play. It's not just specific to one level pack. So, I'm going to look at the translation now. Right, now I'm going to explain what this is. This is basically for anything that came from the old format. And I'll open up something like I'll I'll just use my I'll just use my fav old favorite the scrap brain one. So in here, don't worry if you don't understand what all this is all about for now. I'll try and explain it as much as I can later when I try and tie it all up. Theme. This will be basically being referenced in the editor later because you actually need to ex select a theme for a level when you're in the editor now. And that's pretty important. I think that's where a lot of people get confused. So it goes through each piece in your old graphics there. And then it tells you what, what it references in the new version of the tile set. As you can see, it's Flow Scrap Brain in the old format. But I've been forced to rename it to Flopsy Scrap Brain in the new format. Now these are just changes that Nepst has done for me. I didn't actually modify these files myself. Um, so as you can see it all says flopsy scrap brain most of the way down but then you get to pieces that came from other graphic sets for example and this is where we stop trying to cut down on duplication because the actual steel in the uh, scrap brain tile set is from the sega tile set so what, what neps has done is he's referenced the steel in the original sega tile set so what it does is it just takes each piece from the old tile set and then it tells you what piece to use in the new format version, whether it be from the tile set or so forth. And most of the time in these offset things, you'll see noughts. This is just in cases like empty space in your pieces or something like you didn't actually, you made a piece. There was a piece for exact. there's pieces, for example, where the border actually extends far, far around the piece actual piece itself and there's actual actually blank borders on the outside of it that's just to get rid of the border empty borders on them so yeah and then it comes down to objects down here and something that should be noted with the new format tile set says it doesn't matter what order your object list or your terrain list is in because it goes by the actual text name of the file not the index number so you only see index numbers referenced in the old, in the translation tables because it's just telling you what index number refers to what piece. But I'm sure I'll come back to these translation tables at a later stage because I'm going to explain hopefully in another video or maybe later on in this one that how to how to convert your own tile sets because it would be very helpful if you knew how to do it yourself rather than rely on people like Nepster and other people to do it. But don't worry if you can't do it. So GFX, let, now, this is in case you wanted to change the mechanics of the game, but I wouldn't recommend doing this personally. This is only for the absolute professional people, and I shouldn't really be explaining this, because there's a... Uh, there's just load. There's just the. I shouldn't really be telling them how to do this because they probably got a lot more knowledge than me. So, helpers. That's what that's what you see in clear physics mode or the full distance marker. You, you're welcome to modify these if you want. If you're really, if you're really that. If you're just really that uh, stylistic, you can change the color of the text if you wanted to. But that's completely your own thing, you know. I'm not I'm not telling you how to do it. And you know, there's menu markers here. This is in case you want to change the design of the you know the actual artwork used in the game. But it's all there and it's all referenced in the actual Neolemix code. So, you know, it's all here for you to modify. So basically this is just like uh, if you refer to my flexi toolkit tutorial you know it's all here now you can just uh, you can just replace these files with whatever you want now so 
yeah. And then I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that one's about. Those blue, those arrows there. I've not seen those before. Yeah, levels. This is where all your level packs are going to go. So if you ever download a level pack, you need to make sure you put it in here. And I think that's all you need to do, actually. You just get a file that's... Let's look at, let's look at Seblems, for example. Look, it, it then gets break, broken down by rank. And then you'll have the logo here as well. Yeah, there's the Seblems logo. The music. Well... Again, this is just this is oh okay. So this these are files that basically override the uh, the one the ones in the data file because this it's got a music and post view file here. See, so I'm learning as I go through these because I haven't actually gone through these myself, but because I know what they all do. What the hell's going on here? Why does that say number one? Need to delete that and save it because <laughs> it's supposed to be referencing that one. So yeah, it will have all your level files broken down by rank, and then if you go into the folder, it's got all the levels listed in alphabetical order. Now that's probably the most annoying thing about this is the fact that all the levels will be listed in alphabetical order, and they won't be in level order. But anyway, let's open a. Uh, Let's open a level file just to show you what they look like as well while we're here. So, okay, so we got, it will tell you the name of the level, the author, it'll basically tell you all the information you need to know. That's the level ID as well. You know, if you ever change that, then the level will be, the level won't be recognized by anything. Well, it will be recognized, but replay files will say, oh, this is not the right level. Because replay files use this to identify it. Uh, it's got all the level stats, you know, all the width and height, where the start screen is. So basically, everything is written in text format now. So if there's ever a problem with the level file, or there's an error or something, you know, and the editor's refusing to open it, you can just come in here and see if there's anything wrong with it. And again, it'll just be like. Uh, It'll be just like that. Uh, it'll be just like that uh, translation file. It'll tell you what collection it came from and what's collection just means this graphic set, and the piece is the name of the actual terrain piece. So, and then it tells you its x and y coordinates, which helps as well. So it just does that all the way down the level, basically. As you can see, as something's coming from the the Mida, the Mida honeycomb tile set, it's been unusual for a scrap brain level, isn't it? Um, unfortunately, it doesn't show pictures of levels, which is a bit annoying. But uh, you know, you can't have everything. It's really, really good. <laughs> Ironically, this is exactly that's exactly the same level Artie's stuck on, and his Seblem's help here at the moment. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so info. These are basically all scroller lines here. You can even add you can even add even more lines if you wanted to, which is why which is why the new format is probably very is is actually that so much better because you're not limited anymore by what you want to do. That's just basically all scroller line text, and that's the title screen thing, and that's the author script thing there. So this is all the title screen info here. So I'm not gonna save that. And then levels. Yeah, I looked at that already, and I've identified an error in the folder as well. So basically, it tells you the rank name and tells you what folder it needs to go to to look look at that rank. So that's a level pack really for you. Okay, so the music folder I've already told you about. Don't concern yourself with this folder. This is just a folder that was you know I downloaded as it was. So this is all basically stuff that's been customly downloaded. And if you just make a comprehensive list of music, you know, all the possible music you come across is all across all possible level packs you've got, you know, it all appears in the editor. It's all nice and convenient in, in this folder for you. It might be huge, but as long as you know the name of what you're looking for, it's fine, isn't it? Replay files. If you're familiar with the old format, you know, I don't really need to explain this. It does it does exactly the same as the old format here for replays. Save. 
There was nothing in there. I can't really tell you what that one's all about. Perhaps because I haven't tried. Well, actually, I have. I have been playing. I've been playing Ray Marnie's Lemmings Halloween 2017 pack on the new format, so it doesn't really make sense. Okay, hotkeys. That comes into up in text format as well. That would just be that would just be a hotkey file. So if you ever lose your hotkeys, well, if you ever lose your hotkeys, I don't. I think that file would probably wouldn't be there. Settings. If you ever want to change settings, or actually actually accessing Neolemics, you can come here to do it. And all you need to do is change the noughts to ones if you want them turned on or off. So one for on and zero for off, but that was in the old format as well. So if you didn't, but if you didn't already know about that, then that's that's where you need to go. Now this is something interesting. This is actually all the sounds that are made in the game. Like uh, there's the let's go. I'll play it now. Look. There you go. And uh, yeah, just ignore my music there. <laughs> I know it's still flashed up then. <laughs> and there's the 10 ton weight, for example. <laughs> yep, there we go. So, if you ever wanted to reference sound files in the graphics set, because I know it says a sound, I know it says a actual field there to actually specify a sound file, and the graphic editor will actually play that sound for that object, which is really, really good feature, I think. So you just need to make sure if you want to make if you want any of your objects to make custom noises, this is where you need to put them in the sound folder here. And I this is something I actually did not know until very recently. This was probably the one of the hot longest the one of the most confusing folders. All right, styles. This is where the actual styles will go, so don't get them mixed up with the translation tables. The translation tables are only there to tell you. How the old formats map to the new formats. So, if you've got an old, if you've got a graphics that is in an old form that was an old format file, you'll typically get the style folder, which is you know, for example, this file here, Flopsy, uh, Scrap Brain. Just, just keep with my general consensus of what I was doing earlier, and. Uh, you also have a corresponding thing to put in the translation folder under the data folder, which is this one. Now, you might notice it's under a different name, but that's okay because that's the name of the old format file. So the old format file, it might be called something different because that's what it was called in the old format. So don't worry if it's called something different because if you open the file, it will actually reference the new name in it. So don't worry if it's not making sense to you. I don't know what the base DOL is. I think it's it's uh I think that's a system file that is, so you mustn't mess with that. Error log. Now this one's important if you ever get any problems with the new format. Because if you ever get an error in in Neolemics ever, it will always write it in this file. As you can see, I've had lots and lots of errors. So from the top, it goes from the top. It goes from top to bottom as well. So if you ever get a fight, an error, always go to the bottom and uh, copy and paste the very late, the very late thing that happened. And what you need to do is you need to go to the Lemmings forums and go to the bugs and suggestions section here and report it. There's so many people who come in. I'm not I'm not pointing fingers at people, but there are a lot of people who come in the IRC saying things are wrong, but uh, don't actually report it. But I'm just saying, you know, you can just come and do it here rather than. But it's it's nice to come in the IRC as well. But you know, come in the IRC, talk about it, but at the same time, make a bug bug a bug report about it because you know we need we need to have we need the info that's written here. But it'll be very very complicated to write all that in the IRC if you know what I mean. So anyway, back to the folder. Okay, this is the graphics set tool here, the graphics tool. So I'll do more on that in another in in another video. This is the graphics graphics set conversion tool. Right now, I'm going to show you 
exactly how to use this because I got caught out on this. You need to have a separate window open. Well, you could probably do it other ways, but if you had it in the same file, it would probably be possible. But if there are the same folder, it would be possible. But if you had to drag things from other folders, for example, right? So we're going to go to a styles thing. So all you need to do is all you need to do is you need to just go and drag. Try not to do something. I'm trying to do something which I know will be okay if it's uh Okay, so let's do this one called special dot da. So what you need to do is you need to drag it across and drop it on the graphics that convert thing in the heat in here. And then wait a minute, you'll see a DOS window come up in a moment. There you go. And if it disappears, then everything's gone all right. And if you go to the styles folder now, you'll see a folder for it. Look. Okay, this one's already been done, but if it's been successful, you know, it will appear in this folder if it wasn't there before. So that's basically how you convert a tile set to a new format. It's a pretty easy process. If it if the black window, the black dot MS DOS will prompt window just appears and disappears again, then everything went swimmingly and it should be in your styles folder after that. If for any reason it, you're doing this and it does not appear in your styles folder, again, that's a bug and you need to report it on the Lemmings forums. Right here, remember. <laughs> okay. And uh, again, when talking about it, when you, you might want to pr provide the graphic set file with an attachment as well when you report that, when you, if you make a report on it as well. So this is the Neo Lemmings player. But I'm sure everybody knows that. Double clicking on it will bring up Neolemix. But I'll go over all the tools another time. This is the logging. Um, this basically just basically this basically just tells you when you start the when you start in the player, I think. Well, there's a lot of different timestamps at different times there. Must have been opening the Neolemix editor and the Neolemix play a lot on the 23rd of September. Okay, I don't really understand that file, but I'm sure it comes into play at some some stage. And this is the Neolemix settings. This is the settings file for the player. But I think we've seen this one in another folder somewhere. So, yeah, I think it's there. It's that exact same file. It's not exactly the same file, but. And again, it's the hotkeys file here. I think what it is, is that's the default settings. They're the default settings. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Don't take my word for those things. Okay, here's the editor. And that just launches the editor, but I'll do the editor another time again. Leo Lemix editor settings. Uh, not really messed about with this one, to be honest. So I couldn't really give you anything anything on this one. Um, I think to be honest, if you if you change any of these trues to falses, I think things would start disappearing on the Neolemix editor. So if you want all the things displayed that you want, I wouldn't mess recommend messing with this file. And this NXP convert file, again, I'm going to uh, find an NXP and drop it on this. I actually need to convert an NXP to be honest because I haven't actually done it recently. Um, I just need to find it. So I've recently updated Seblems. So let's take this N let's take this Seblems 1.9 here and drop it on this NXP convert and I bet it fails. Okay, so you should see this. Please note this tool only converts the level data, talisman data, system text, and menu graphics, custom skill panels, and lemming sprites are not currently handled. These must be important import. 
Okay, custom skill panels or lemming sprites are not currently handled. That's important to know. These must be imported manually and graphic sets must be converted with GS Convert before attempting to convert the NXP. So basically, if you try and convert an NXP and you have not got any of the corresponding styles in this folder here, so basically if, you, if you're even missing one tile set in, in this folder that was in the, it's in the NXP, then the conversion will fail. So let's give this a try. I'm going to press enter. So if it's if it continues running like this, then things are going okay. And it's removing talismans as you can see because it's not a, it's not it's no longer a supported talisman. Don't think I had any with release rate limits. And if you ever get if you get any error messages during, then you've, you're, you're missing a, there's something wrong with the styles somewhere. As you can see, this all finished, but it's only because I converted Seblems before, and I, you know, I've debugged all that. So now you should be able to go to your level pack folder, and as you can see, I've got two Seblems now. I can get rid of that one now. Actually, I'll probably keep it actually just in case there's any problems with the newer levels as opposed to the old. But I haven't actually uh, debugged Seblems at all yet at the moment. And this is just the Flexi Toolkit at the bottom. It's called Pack Toolkit. There we go. <laughs> um... So how long how long was this video? Twenty seven minutes. Okay, I think I think I'll cut this video off now, and in the next video I will be going through um, how to convert how to convert actual level packs. Actually, I'll, I'll see how long I'll see how long it takes me to go through it. If the video runs over an hour, I might uh, just split the videos but if it if it stays under an hour I might uh, I might uh, keep it all under one video just to keep it nice and simple okay so you want to convert a graphic set to the new format so with this we're going to we're going to we're going to refer to this topic here um how to convert uh, where is it? There we go. So we'll refer to uh, Nepster's uh, little checklist here just to make sure I cover everything and I'll, I'll explain it in more detail for you. Okay, so how to convert a graphic set. So give your pieces proper names. So for this, I'm not going to use the old, I'm going to use the new format graphic set tool. I will be trying to go through these as well while I'm doing it. So I'll start by going through the new graphic set tool first. This, this, this took me a while to work out. But this is the general thing. And in this name column here, you put the actual name of the graphic set. So for this, I'm going to put Flopsy Demo. Okay, and that's that's that. And here, this is where you can change the background color of the level, and it's done in the format of you put any number in between in in between from naught to two five five in these columns here, and it'll change the color depending on that. So you'll need an RGB code for it for the color basically, and a good way to get an RGB code is. If you go into paint, I know I did this in a previous video, um, and if you click anywhere on this palette here, you'll get. Okay, why is that color not coming up? Okay, there we go. Because I had a, had a, had the bottom shade selected. So anyway, you'll get a corresponding color for depending on what you pick, and that's basically the same system as. Okay, what's that doing there? Okay, that's basically the same system as this. But 
and this is just the background color so i've got a yellow background now basically as a natural background and this is the mini map outline color so you don't want it to be black obviously you want it to be something other than black there we go. we've got a mini blue we've got a blue mini map this only matters though if you haven't got the high resolution one turned on and this this is where it, I should probably mention as well, at the moment, the, unless you really, really want to add your own one way, unless you've got your own one way arrows in a tile set, which I don't tend to do myself to be honest, you, uh, you just use the standard ones from the marble tile set, and this is where you can set the colours of the one way arrows. So for most of the tile sets I'm doing at the moment, because I'm making quite a few at the moment, I just set it to. 255 255 255 which is just white one-way arrows and then i couldn't get this one to work for some reason but this is the actual color of the pickup skill circle this is the back this is the background color behind the actual pickup there uh, behind the actual skill itself in the circle and then you can change the color of the border as well but i'm not going to go into detail on that mask that's basically your builder color so that's confusing. That is because I I just I just uh, see it as build a color. So that's the general terrain sorted. Here's where you add your terrain pieces, and for this I'm actually got some experimental ones here. Uh, if you've got things with this annoying pink background color in this. Uh, if it, with the pink background color in this that I actually recommended you do in the old graphics set tutorial um, You can't actually do you can't actually set this pink transparent color as a back as a transparent color anymore But I have got a workaround for this if you use the old graphics set tool and You import it in Get rid of the transparent color then if you export it out again, look, the transparent color's gone, look. So with a little bit of help from the gra old graphic set tool, you can just import it in and export it out if you want to get rid of the transparent, the, that pink transparent color. So that white background is now transparent now. So, and you need, you would need this for this and as you can see now it's transparent so this is where you set the name of the piece now this is cut this comes back to when what Nepster was saying so you can't just put things like t5 or you know you can't just put a number anymore they're really bad so um so try and keep your name short and simple you know like a short name and a number so i'm going to show you an example now of what i'm on about and something i found when using the graphics set tool as well when loading files um show you my show you what my real more recent tile sets are Flopsy. So this is one is one that I've actually done recently, and I've submitted it to Nepster to be for Neolemix. And yeah, so as you can see, you can't actually no load any of the terrain or the objects. You actually need to. You just need you need to load the theme file basically. So load the theme, and it just loads the entire tile set for you. So. This is actually a tile set for the Mystic Cave Zone in Sonic 2, in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So, okay, what's happened there? Why has that one got a zero, 0 That's supposed to be Brick Wall 1, that is. So when you rename it, it changes the name on the thing as well. So... When you save as well, there's no easy way around this. You've actually got to delete the old one. 
and then uh, select your styles folder up here and then press save and then it successfully saves so and I've reported that and it's apparently it's a bug so hopefully that gets fixed so as you can see I've got brick wall 01, brick wall 02, brick wall 03, and then I've got a hanging lantern. But I've only got one hanging lantern, but I still put hanging lantern 01. Um, something I probably should also do. This is probably a bit of a better practice. You should probably, you should really put to underscores, you know, where the space is in names, but. So going what Napster says, he says, um, he says up there, look, long names are overkill and blue large block with three red stripes is probably overkill. Okay, so these names aren't actually that long, as long as this one. So... Right, so style name has to start with your nickname. So that just comes back to the style the style file. So when you make a tile set in your in your own name, in a, one of your own creations, make sure the tile set name starts with your name. And you see there's a lot of flopsy ones here. And the giggle M ones start with giggle M. We've got wrong thing, echo two a lot, insane Steve, uh Minim, Mobius, Namida. RT up the top as well. Um, so yeah, you get the idea. Let me get rid of that old graphic set tool now, so I don't need it. Okay, so what else did Neps to say? Check the terrain pieces arranged in a proper way in the editor. Yeah, this just comes. This has already been done. Look, but make sure you know it all flows in a nice way. But this has already been put into alphabetical order by the uh, graphics tool anyway, because it just puts them in alphabetical order for you. So make sure all your pieces are named. And I like to keep I like to keep it cut down, you know, and you know, nice big numbers on them. As you can see, there's 17 rock terrains, but as you can see, they all are, they are all actually part of the same group. There, they're all the same type of terrain. And then we've got a wooden crate. There's only one wooden crate, but I still put a zero one on the end. So, but the reason that's done is so you don't get mixed up with other pieces, pretty much. So you just want names that are unique but also identifiable. So, explain that again. Things like T5 and O42, you know, they're just going to be things that people, if everybody did that, it would be the same across loads and loads of graphic sets. So, in the, uh, I admit I'm really prepared for this one very well because I haven't actually got an old tile set to translate at the moment. Um, what I should probably do is. What I should probably do is I should probably uh, well I'll, I'll I'll just I'll just try and explain what happens okay so when you uh, make when you convert a graphic set tile by dragging it onto graphic set convert and you saw early in the video. There was a black box that came up and then disappeared, and then it'll, you'll get a file in the styles folder, explain uh, telling you what it is, but it'll, it'll still be under the name of your old tile set. So in that case, for example, I had one that was called Flow, um, sorry, Flow Casino Night. I had to add P S Y to it, so so it says Flopsy. 
So what I did was when it came like when it came it was like this flow casino night. So I had to rename it Flopsy Casino Night, but you can't just do that and just leave it at that. You need to go to data and translation and then come over to this one, Flow Casino Night. And then you it will say Flow Casino Night all the way down this file as well. So what you need to do is you need to go to edit, replace, and then replace everything Flow Casino Night with Flopsy Casino Night. Now I'm not actually going to, and then you press replace all, but I'm not going to do that because it's already been done. But this, just, just, just ride with me here. Flow Casino Night would say all here, and then it would go to Flop C Casino Night. And most of the time, if you've got everything all nice and tied up, you know, named and everything in the graphic sets, in the old graphic sets, or I'll bring it up again. Taking his time. So let's load uh, the Flow Casino Night file. Styles Flow Casino Night. So there, there. Look, you could change the name there of all the pieces, but one thing you should never do in this editor is you should never reorder the pieces in here so if you've got names and all the pieces are all over the place do not rearrange them this is the reason why this one's already arranged is because i when i made the tile set i had the naming in mind and before i made any levels with it i made sure they're all in the right order but you might have pieces that are all over the place but that's fine as long as you name the pieces but don't change the order of them, that's fine. And uh, there you go. This is why it's important to name pieces. So I'll, I'll leave that in the background anyway. Let's reference back to the thing here. Check that the terrain piece is arranged in a proper way in the editor. This is the new format editor. So, so in the editor. Okay, so remove slow freeze and triggered op to trigger decoration objects. Now I don't have any of these in my tile set, but if you do, if you do, if you do have to convert a tile set and it does have the graphics converter in the it it does have slow freeze or triggered decoration objects in them, they will still go through, but they will uh, no longer be supported. So I highly recommend you just read this point four in this type in this topic here. Remove duplicated pieces. Now this is the one that is gonna this is the one that uh, most of the time I just let Neps to handle this, but uh, I am trying to do this myself now where where possible. If you use pieces that are from other tile sets, as in you did not make it yourself. Um, then um, it will be it, it's this this that piece will be duplicated because you don't want it in your tile set as well as the other tile set. What will happen is you will when you uh, get this gets to the translation file here. Again, Nepster did this for me, so I'll give you an example of some duplicated pieces. So, it doesn't say Flopsy Scrap Brain. There we go, we've got Grom Killing Cyber. That's because it's a locked exit. Hmm. 
and uh, the button from the Gronkling Cyber set used as well. It's not right, is it? Um, I think this conversion's been done wrong because uh, it doesn't matter. Um, that's the splat pad which came from the Wasteland tile set by Namida. So you just what you need to do is if it came from the tile set, you need to say which one it came from and then which piece it is, and then it will just use that instead and not. Uh, you don't even, you don't need to have a duplication in your tile set, and that it will then appear in the uh, editor just fine. And these are all the one way arrows that came from the original fire the the uh, the, the fire tile set. So there's an example of one-way arrows that are not standard. But as long as you state which tile set they came from and what the name of the piece is, and it's quite easy to find out. All you need to do is go to the tile set in the styles folder and go and look for the actual object. If you view the uh, large icons, you can then see which ones are which? Well, for some reason, it's not uh, showing them all. So there you go. <laughs> How are we doing on time? 46 minutes. Um, so going, going back to uh, Going back to um, this uh, topic anyway, edit out pre-placed lemmings. Most, pretty much all the times, the graphics converter does this for you. But uh, in the case it doesn't do it, which has never happened to me, you just need to refer to this article here. Combine exit and exit tops. Right, this is an important one. This is because um, some of the older tile sets had a uh, had animated tops had animated tops on the exits and to make life easy they decided to split the exits i'm sure people who have level designed in the old tile set knew this already i mean i'm sure people noticed the ed the hell tile set exit for example was cut in half the marble one was the same so if you're making your own tile set in your own exit make sure it's all one complete piece to basically that's that's all it's telling you to do it just involves a lot of it just needs it just involves some editing and paint and you just need to combine the top and the bottom all in all in one file if it's an animated exit which a lot of them are crop huge empty spaces this is not really a problem for anyone who's made a custom style but just as a rule of thumb, don't make any custom styles and then have lots of empty space in your uh, terrain pieces. Just make sure the size of the piece is exactly scaled so there's no, you know, it's the right height and the right width and that's all the, the height and width that you require basically. But I think that pretty much covers it. But uh, if anyone's confused about any of this, or haven't explained it well enough, just uh, say in the comments, and uh, I'll try and address the issue. Um, um, I'm not sure, too sure that's all I've got everything covered. Well, I'll try. I'll, try, I'll just try and go. I'll just try and go over it one more time quickly. So, just to reiterate, just to summarise, this is the actual style file in the style folder. But what we have up here in data and translation, this is the bit that is going to be you're probably going to be spending the majority of your time if you're converting your tile set over. 
No, you only need to do this if you have if you you only need to have a translation file if it's an old format file coming over to the new format coming over to the new format. And what it does is, I'll load uh, the Flopsy Casino, the Flow Casino Night one. Um, what it does is it just tells you every piece. See, that's uh, the pre-placed Lemming one there, and that's the graphics set converter should do this for you and that's the pickup skill which they all should that should also do it for you and uh i think pretty much everything in the casino night tile set is uh in the casino night tile set because oh Um, let's look at Marble Garden for a bit of a better example. Um, so I got things that are from the Sander Polis tile set, and that's fine because it's just using it's using the steel from that tile set. It's a bit save it being duplicated in another tile set. So what it means is the actual file will exist in one tile set, but it can be refer referenced by multiple tile sets, and then it can be uh, used in that tile set. If that makes any sense. So if you want to have a tile set which references pieces from other tile sets, you just need to put them into this file here. So I hope that explains it well. I hope I haven't confused anybody in making this video. And uh, I'll just quickly uh, shoot over the ed editor for anyone who doesn't understand that one. And the uh, flexi as well, because I haven't touched on that one at all. So this is the editor when you open it. And uh, you need to select the theme for your tile set, because if you don't select the theme for your tile set, this is what will happen. I'll just open a level as an example. Um, so here's my uh, Sander Polis tile set level. But what happens if you change the theme is nothing apparently. Okay, maybe it's not a very good example, but um, try this one. Okay, this 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 pins points it a bit better because the uh, one-way arrows will change color. Well, they're not actually changing color, but okay. I can't get anything to work right in this today, can I? Um, but anyway. You just want, you just want, there you go, it worked there, look, because I didn't actually, I actually clicked off it, look. It will, it will take, it will take on the one-way arrows for that tile set. So as you can see, I've used the dirt ones, which have got odd-coloured one-way arrows. The fire ones have got blue one-way arrows. So it will take on the one-way arrows of that one. So, basically... You need to set your theme file so it takes on the color scheme of that tile set. So this is basically the tile set that you want to have the color scheme for, which I covered earlier in the video. It was the uh, theme file in the uh, objects uh, folder, objects folder. Oh, sorry, the actual style folder of the graphics set tool. I'll quickly. I'll quickly go there just to show you. So we're in Marble Garden at the moment. There's the theme file. Well, I went over it on the. Uh, I went over it on the uh, graphic set tool as well, didn't I? Which is here. Look, which is basically just referencing all that. Look. So anyway, back to the editor. 
this is where all your music will be kept as you can see it's got the entire list of the music folder there so you just need to select it from there and Bob's your uncle and background it will have all the background colors across every tile set basically so if I change the look it will take on the color of that tile set Go to a scrap brain one, there you go, a scrap brain look. But if you select your theme, it will have the backgrounds for that tile set displayed at the top of this drop down menu, which is help particularly helpful. So, in case you've forgotten the names of your tile set backgrounds, they'll be at the top for you if you've got the right theme selected. And you can modify the start screen as well by having it. My start screen is wrong, for example. Should be further up like that. Okay, and there's your author field and then your title field there. So this is basically just all the general data for the level. And if you need to go to the objects, you just click here. And as you can see, it has all of the uh, has all the objects lists that you've selected. And uh, if you go to pieces, if you click on a piece, then all these things will become available. You can move things to the front and then move it to the back of the group. This is basically if you want to move pieces behind other pieces, that's what to front, forward, back, and to back are for. So you can move things behind other pieces or in front of other pieces. You can erase terrain by doing that, which will basically allow you to reshape other pieces, like so. Except it doesn't seem to be working. Boy, I'm having a great time at the moment, aren't I? There you go, I'll bring it to the front now, and now it's an erase piece. There we go. And skills, this is where you modify all the skill counts for the level. And there's not really much more to explain other than that, really. Uh, so I'm going to back out of the editor now and go over to the Flexi. Just down here. So yeah, this is where you can this is where you can uh, modify the uh, the save all. And you can modify both lines as well. Basically, just change them right here. And that's all the scroller text. That's the levels. So, I think you can only add a talisman if you've actually got levels to add talismans to, but some talisman support has been removed, I know that. I can't exactly detail which ones at the moment, but, and you don't really need to, you don't really need to concern yourself with this music thing, because this will just add music to the uh, NXP, and you don't need to do that anymore. And this is pretty advanced anyway so anyway I think you just need to concern yourself with this first and second tab here and nothing else really oh I see this is in case you want to modify the artwork of the pack you can change the rank signs and everything and all the uh, title logos so yeah that's pretty important I'd say if you want to have some identity in your pack so that's pretty much all i can tell you about the uh, new format i hope this has been helpful for you and thanks a lot everyone for watching and i will catch you next time